A tickle to flag off presidential campaign in Akwaibom on Monday. And APC's presidential campaign council still receiving imputes. Party is to release the list by weekend. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agadji. Thanks for joining us. The Director General of the People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Council, Governor Aminu Tambuwal, has said the PDP standard bearer, former Vice President Atikwa Abubakar, will flag off his campaign next Monday in Oyo, the Akwaibom state capital. According to Tambuwal, the PDP will campaign based on issues affecting the country, adding that Atikwa is well prepared to provide the required leadership. Tambuwal made the revelation in Abuja on Tuesday at a press conference after the inspection of Atiku's campaign offers. He said the campaign of his party is going to be issue-based, adding that the candidate of the PDP is presenting in 2023 are providing solutions with their plans. Joining us live to discuss this is Borono Basse, PDP Publicity Secretary at Kwaibom State. We're glad to have you join us on the program, Mr. Basse. Good evening to you. Good evening, viewers. It's good to be here. Okay. Uh, well, now we can say finally the campaign is kicking off uh, formally. How prepared are you uh, to carry out this campaign? Well, thank you very much. It's good to be here once again. For us in Akwaibom State and for us as the People's Democratic Party in Nigeria, we are very prepared for the flag of, of the campaigns which is scheduled to begin to hold in Uyo, the Aquabum State capital of Monte. Now, the interesting thing about the, uh, this campaign to be flagged off in Uyo is the fact that um, right from the return of democracy in Nigeria, Aquabum State has been privileged, you know, to be led or be governed by people who have been given by the People's Democratic Party in Nigeria. So Nigerians are coming to uh, the Aquabum State capital for, you know, for us, for them to actually tell Nigerians, the message to Nigeria that the, the infrastructure, the expansive infrastructure, the, 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 the uh, development that has been erected by the PDP led government in Akwaibo State is possible for us to replicate that in Nigeria. And for us, the message is going to be the sense, Excellency, the Presidential candidate of our party, Al Haji Atiku Abubakar, has promised, and is um, Nigerian a, a, a robust, you know, turnaround in terms of the economy, in terms of the governance, you know, that from what we are experiencing now, and that um, promise is distilled into his um, agenda or uh, covenant statement with Nigerians. And so we're expecting that when Nigerians shall gather, when the whole of the attention of Nigerians shall be focused in Rio at five home state, and um, we shall be telling that the time is right for us to take our destinies into our hands and then return the PDP back to the national level so that we can build and rescue this country, this economy that has been so bad, that has been so bad, that has been, that has been so bastardized by the APC government. Are you saying that's what informed the choosing of Akwaibom State to be where this campaign is going to be flagged off, that uh, Akwaibom has done well for the people and that is what you want to showcase to the entire Nigerians, or there are other reasons why they are flagging off, or you are flagging off the, this campaign in Uyo? Yes, you heard me correctly. I, the, the truth has remained that... Um, since the return of democracy in 1999, Akwaibom State has privileged, Akwaibom people have chosen to stay with the People's Democratic Party. And that choice has brought a lot of um, development strides for the people. And so the choice, I said that the choice of um, Uyo as, as the venue for the flag of, official flag of, of the PDP 
campaigns is very apt because the truth is, even in the past seven and a half years, the man whom we have been privileged to lead us, His Excellency Mr. Dun Emmanuel, has erected various pillars of development across the critical sectors of this state's economy. And so when we, when we gather in Uyo on Monday, we shall be telling Nigerians that what the PDP has done in our five on state is possible for us to represent. And, you know, His Excellency Atiku Obaka is one gentleman who is prepared and has the political will, you know, to lead this nation at this critical moment. And, you know, he's promised, you know, in even to some of the things we have said, you know, since we emerged, you know, as um, the presidential candidate of our party, he said that he to restore Nigeria's economy back to the the pre um, pre two fifteen level where Nigeria Nigeria was Africa's strongest economy with a of five hundred and forty six point seven billion. And he also he's also promised to strengthen Nigeria's educational system and also equip our students with skills needed to be competitive in the new global order, driven by uh, innovation, science, and technology, amongst all the other things that he's promised. And so we're hoping that some Nigerians will be prepared at this time to take their destiny into their hands and then say, never again shall we go, you know, in the direction that we shall move forward with the PDP as we march towards rescuing this nation from the pangs of insecurity, from the pangs of this governance, which this nation has unfortunately deployed. Okay, uh, well, we will go, uh, go back to, the, or come back to the person of Atikwa Abubakar uh, uh, later on. But now, you're going into this campaign, it's starting on Monday, yet uh, we hear that um, PDP seems to be going into this campaign as a divided house. We can also have feelers that the meeting between the, your principal and the Wiki camp, as we have known them, the Big Five, or whatever name they, call, they are calling themselves right now, uh, ended in deadlock. So how do you think you're going to succeed when your house is divided or have you resolved all the, all the differences? Let us have that inside information into that. Well, for Nigerians who have been following the little misunderstandings that we've had as a party, would all, they would also come to agree that um, we're making very, very... Um, very commendable steps in trying to resolve these issues. And don't forget that um, the peculiarity of our party, you know, has been that uh, we, we've always had a way to sit on the table and then see how we can talk about these issues and resolve these issues. So the series of meetings that we've had, although, you know, we're trying to also, you know, arrive at the consensus that it was all the parties, the, meetings that we've had shows that we're making efforts and I assure you that in the days to come, in the days to come that we will come back together and then all the issues to address all the people who who people who feel um, aggrieved at this time, you know, will come together so that together we can face the patriotic call by Nigerians for us to come and rescue this nation. Well, you, you sound very, very confident in the PDP in resolving issues. And this also was how PDP sounded very confident before the 2015 election. The biggest political party, the biggest this and that, and that you're going to be in office for, or you're going to be in power for about 50 years or above. And still, uh, you couldn't make any headway from 2015 till now. Do you think this confidence is enough to give you the edge over the other parties, especially the party, the ruling party right now? Well, for us um, as a party, all the stakeholders have spoken and um, it, the message has been clear that um, as the party, we have learned lessons, you know, when we left power in at the national level in 2015. And so those lessons are very fresh in our memories and then, um, for us, what we intend to do at this time, and you know, you would agree with me that the fact we have not, we are not telling people who have genuine grievances off that you know we need all the people to, and you know, it will interest you to know that um, as a party that has, uh, you know, that has the name people giving its name, it means that our people have been our strength, that our people have been 
our core source of strength. And so we cannot, we cannot, as we march 2023, we cannot tell them off. And so that's why we're meeting, we're trying to reach out to everyone. You see the presidential candidate trying to meet with a lot of people, trying to see how we can, you know, get everyone on the table so that together we can march forward. And so this is not about mounting confidence, it's about the fact that we're making efforts to ensure that together we move together and, you know, face the patriotic duty that Nigeria are hoping to be for. Okay, what are these um, main issues that you intend to address in the course of the campaign? Uh, I do not want to go back to the issues you are trying to address, uh, why you have these factions in the first place. But in the course of this campaign, like the president has said, he has begged practically every politician to make sure that the campaigns are issue-based. What are these issues that PDP will be bringing to the front burner uh, during the course of this campaign? Well, the 2023 election for us, from the blinders that we've seen it, uh, is going to be a referendum on, you know, the direction on where Nigeria and where Nigeria go in 2020. And so for us, um, as the party, uh, his, uh, the presidential candidate of our party, His Excellency Haji Atiku Abubakar, has promised, and, you know, those promises have made several to Nigerians. And those promises that distilled into a political document in my covenant with Nigerians. And um, by way of preventing you with some overview of that, um, what he's promised, he, that he's promised that he's going to address the vexed issue of the structure. And, you know, it is the belief of our party and the belief of our presidential candidates uh, collectively. We do believe that um, if we make, um, if we take some of the you know, uh, focus of the federal government as from where it's currently looking at now and try to strengthen, you know, the center and then also give powers to the other tiers of government. That are the priorities, that the other priority areas address for the collective progress of this nation. And um, His Excellency Abiko Bubaka in that document has also promised to promote strong, effective, democratic government to guarantee safety of lives and properties. Of course, you would agree with me that um, never at a time, never, uh, never has there been a time in our nation, in the history of our nation, that, um, you know, these, that our country has been so overwhelmed by insecurity with functions of the state used up by bandits, insurgents, separatists. He promised to ensure that he, he promotes an effective democratic government to guarantee the safety of the okay. properties of, you know, Nigerians. And also, he's also a promise to build a dynamic economy driven by the core of collective prosperity. And then also provide qualitative education and all of those other promises. And so we're trusting that the Nigerians who will trust us like they did prior to 2015, prior to 2015, so that together we can work together, you know, into a new Nigeria, which together we can prosper together. Okay, uh, all of us desire a new Nigeria. Uh, this is a final question to you now. Uh, all of us desire a new Nigeria, but um, almost everything we suffer in Nigeria has been tied to corruption. Uh, corruption in the education sector, corruption in, even in security, corruption everywhere. And uh, when you talk about Atiku as being tested and trusted, someone who has brought so many gains to Nigeria, we, the Nigerian people wonder what you really mean. Because his closest examiner, who was uh, his employer, as it were, uh, the former um, president, Olusha Gong Basenjo, doesn't seem to uh, see him as someone who is trustworthy. So if the rest of us were just looking on, and the person who knew him more than everybody else says he's not trustworthy, why should Nigerians now trust him to carry the mantle and carry us to the promised land? Well, the, the truth remains that um, His Excellency Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, the presidential candidate of the PDP, will be coming to the job as president in Nigeria, God's winning and with the support and massive Nigerians in 2023, with, you know, a track record of the way he handled the economy of this nation, you know, and the administration he was part of handled the economy of this nation uh, between the years of 1999 and 2007. 
should actually rely on the indices that we have on ground. And how and the question that Nigerians, you know, are asking themselves for those for all the millions, millions, hundreds of millions of Nigerians who support the article candidacy is the fact that how did we fare when, you know, um during the years of nineteen ninety nine and two thousand and Atiku was vice president. How did that? How did we fare under that administration? And this is a critical question that you know that has informed the massive love and the massive acceptance that His Excellencies um, Atiku Obubakar presidential beat you know is getting. Because the truth is, we must get to a point in this country where we talk about track records. We look at what happened when you were on the saddle. And so, um, I, although I would not you know try to you know, try to question the 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 remarks by His Excellency President Olusho Gunobase. But the truth is, the indices is that when we go back, when we look back at where we've come from, from 1999 to 2004, especially those years, when His Excellency Atikwa Bubaka said as Vice President and was actively, you know, involved in managing the economy of this nation, we would actually agree as the that we were better off. And so he will be coming to the job, but God okay. willing, in 2023, and with the support of Nigerians, with the okay. benefit of okay. those experiences, okay, that huge experience, the political win, and of course, the world of experience gathered, it gathered all through the year. Uh, just, um, well, um, in, in the coming weeks, in the coming days, uh, Nigerians will be interrogating his personality, his integrity, and every other thing. This is just... Uh, uh, a peep into what people might be asking, but we are concerned. You have so much confidence, but um, there seem to be not just the ruling uh, All Progressives Congress that you have to contend with. There seem to be a third force that is coming up. Are you threatened by this uh, third force? Well, um, to be very honest, you as a party, the PDP is not really threatened. Given the history and the journey that we've had um, with the, the key players in the third force, recall that um, somewhere when the, there was a time, you know, in the history of this nation, you know, when the key players, when some members of the key players of this third force who make allusions to, were actually members of our party. And they had so much belief in themselves and in the ability and the political will, the experience level of His Excellency Atiko Bubaka to lead an administration of collective prosperity and economic growth. And so um, it, it, it puts to question, you know, the fact that uh, at this point, you know, the, though they have decided to break away and form a third force, is actually, you know, the concern that um, people who have sat and are logical enough and would ask the right questions, you know, would actually believe that this is actually the direction to go. Okay, well, um, we hope to still talk to you some other time and ask you how you're faring so far. But for now, this is the much we can take from you. And we'd like to thank you for being a part of our show today. We know that your schedule is very tight now, especially now that you're preparing for uh, the flag off. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. I'd like to also use this platform to invite all Nigerians to Uyo the Aquarium State Capital on Monday. And that event is on the nest of champions. And I also invite you so that um, it's best for you to be on ground so that you can get to, you know, from the mouth of the presidential candidates of our party. All right. Thank you so much. Well, um, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, the APC is yet to flag off its campaign. We'll be talking about that. Stay with us.